Marhaban. My name is Ian Campbell, and this series of 10 videos is the fifth series in a whole set of videos explaining the basics of how to speak, read, and write Al Fusha, or Modern Standard Arabic. These videos will explore the basics of using verbs in Arabic, and this third video will examine commands. So al amr is our word for command. It can also mean like the matter or the issue that you're talking about, and you'll see it in that context sometimes. The plural is al awamir. So telling people to do things is a really important linguistic skill. Most Arabic textbooks won't teach you the command form until quite a bit later after you learn the present tense. And I used to do this, and then I had a child, and I found out that telling people not to do things was really, really important. Don't eat that uh, was something I said a lot about 15 years ago. So we're going to foreground commands here. They're not that difficult to form, but they're a little bit different from the present tense. So I'm going to go through this step by step here. The first thing you have to understand as background information is that the command forms use one of the other two versions of the present tense. This is called the muldare majzum. You don't have to know that word. Majzum means cut off or severed. Um, in English, it sometimes gets this funny name, present jussive. I have never seen the word jussive outside of this context, so I don't really know what it means, but you'll see that sometimes in an English language grammar book. Uh, we don't have different versions of the present tense in English, um, and they're so close to each other in Arabic that sometimes it's hard to tell. I'm just using this as background information. So what this will result in is some minor spelling changes on the endings for certain basic verbs. Nothing very difficult. And then when we get to talking about irregular verbs, which will be in the second series of verb videos down the road, then the spelling changes will be a little bit more major and you'll have to deal with them. But forewarned is forearmed. Right now, we're just going to talk about simple verbs. <clears throat> so telling people how not to do something, or not how not to do something, but rather not to do something, is much easier than the affirmative command. All you do is put la before the verb, and then sometimes change the ending. So usually la before the verb means that person isn't doing that thing, but spoken with emphasis, it can mean don't do that thing. So for example, we have here tektobo, and it has this little dhamma at the end, which more normally we don't say. We just say tektob for you write. It could also mean she writes or non-human they write, like a bunch of dogs or something. But we're going to go with you masculine here. So don't write becomes la tektob. So in everyday speech, it sounds the same, tektob versus la tektob. Now in formal speech, you're going to say tektobo, and then here you're going to say taktub, and we put sukun on the last on the last letter to make sure there's no vowel sound. And this is what tells you it's this third form of the present tense, if you're really concerned about grammatical details. Um, this isn't, again, really that important. La taktub, don't write. It's pretty intuitive for an English speaker to be able to use the negative command. I'm just kind of pointing this out for detail purposes. So if it's a woman, it's going to be tektobin. You girl are writing. You woman are writing. And what's going to happen here is that we're going to um, take the noon off the ending and make it la tektobi. So instead of the ina ending, it's just going to be e. And this is very characteristic of this form of the present tense. It will lose its noon. So la tektobi, don't write if you're talking to a woman. Now, to an English speaker, this is going to be a little bit tricky because don't write is what you would say to anyone, a man, a woman, a dog, a group of dogs, a group of students. It's just going to be don't write. But in Arabic, everything is inflected for gender or number. So if you're speaking directly to a woman, you say la tektobi. Now, as you are a novice learner, if you're in some kind of emergency situation where you're like, don't write. Uh, and you say la tektob to a woman, everyone's going to understand what you're doing and what you mean here. But this is for completeness purposes. If you're speaking to a woman, it's vastly more polite and appropriate to add the E ending here. A similar thing happens with y'all right. So y'all right is tektobuna. So what's going to happen here is if we're making it the command, we're not going to say la tektobuna. We're going to say la tektobu. And the alif is silent here. So la tektobo, 
It needs an alif, a silent alif at the end, for spelling reasons that go back to Quranic times. So I'm going to put it in purple here to make it clear that this isn't pronounced. It's not la tek de bois, it's la tek de boue. So instead of tek de boue, you all write, you say la tek de boue if you're talking to a group of people. Technically, there's another ending for a group made up entirely of women, um, but that's just too much, So, and it's not used in conversation, so I'm not going to worry about it in this set of lessons. So telling somebody not to do something is really pretty easy. You're just going to use the regular second person verb, and you're going to drop the endings or change the endings here to drop the noons off of them. So not exactly rocket science, just one little detail that you have to remember. However, making the affirmative command, do that thing, takes a couple of steps, and I'm going to walk you through it here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the regular masculine singular you form, and we're going to remove the ta from it. So tektobu is you masculine right, and it's going to become ktub once we take the ta off. Tashrabu is you masculine drink, it's going to become shreb once we take the ta off. Tejlis, this is a new verb. The verb jalasa is its name, is to sit or sit down. And when I annotate this PDF, I'll give it to you in the all three forms way that I typically teach verbs. So tejlis is you sit or sit down. That's the same thing in Arabic. And it becomes jlis once we take the ta off. Now to an English speaker, this is unproblematic to say ktub or shreb or jlis because we're used to, in English, being able to begin a word with two consecutive consonants without a vowel between them. Think brother or stadium. We do this all the time. But in many languages, including Arabic, we're not allowed to do this. Spanish is like this as well. That's why you say espanol instead of just spaniel. So, and because Spanish also inherited a great deal from Arabic. So the next step we're going to take is we're going to add a helping vowel at the beginning of a word, and we're going to use alif without hamza as its chair, as its support. And of course, alif is a vertical line, so it's a terribly uncomfortable chair. But ma'alish, that's the way we're going to roll. So the talis form that we got up here is going to be ktub. Now, we can't say that in Arabic because it begins a word with two consecutive consonants with no vowel between them. So we're going to add this helping vowel here. We're going to say uktub. So uktub is what we're going to say. Notice it has no hamza. The alif is not pronounced like an alif. The alif is just the chair for the dhamma here. So uktub, right. And then the talis form for drink is shreb, which is fine to an English speaker, but doesn't work in Arabic. So we add a helping vowel on the beginning, and this time it's kasra. So we're going to say ishreb, ishreb al kahwa, drink coffee. La tashreb ashai, don't drink tea. This can be very easy once you practice it a few times, but because it takes a couple of steps, it's worth going through step by step so you understand how this works before you can learn to form commands. So our talis form for sit or sit down is jlis. And we, because this belongs begins with two consonants with no vowel between them, we're going to add a helper vowel, which is also kasra here. So ijlis. So ijlis means sit down. In Egyptian, iglis. Um, and so that's how you say that. Sit down. Ijlis. Drink. Ishrab. Write. Uktub. So we're going to add this helping short vowel at the beginning of the word in order not to begin the word with two consecutive consonants with no vowel between them, because we're not allowed to do that in Arabic. We could put two consecutive consonants with no vowel between them in the middle or at the end of a word, but we can't do it at the beginning. This is just, uh, languages only permit certain con combinations of sounds. These are called rules of prosody. And so that's why we have to have a helping vowel here. It doesn't necessarily make a lot of intuitive sense to an English speaker, but it does in Arabic. So this is how we have to roll. So the helping vowel that we add is dhamma if the verb's middle vowel is dhamma. So ktub or tektub for you write becomes uktub because its middle vowel is dhamma. 
we add dhamma at the beginning. If the middle vowel is fatha like shreb, or kasra like jlis, we add kasra at the beginning. So if it's dhamma, add dhamma. If it's not, add kasra. Uh, adding fatha will come about when we learn a different pattern of verb conjugation quite a bit later in the third set of verb videos, so don't worry about it for now. If it's dhamma, add dhamma, otherwise add kasra. That's our rule. So here we have dros, so you'd recognize this verb for study here. So dros is study, and then it becomes odros, because we add a dhamma, because we have a dhamma. So odros, odros al al arabiya, study Arabic. Amel comes from the verb for to work, which I will also put in the three verb form, just like jalasa for to sit. Amila is its name. So amel is work, and since it uses fatha on its middle letter, we're going to, since it doesn't use dhamma on its middle letter, is probably a better way to say it, we're going to add kasra at the beginning. Amel, work. And this usually means work with your hands, but you could just as easily use it for something like study and grammar as well, which is actually really harder than working with your hands in a lot of ways. Here's a new verb, raja'a. Raja'a means to return or come back from something. And I'll talk about it and a few other verbs in video five in this series when I talk about how to use prepositions with verbs. So raja is return. Tarjet, it would be if you were talking to, to a person or talking about a person. Um, so we take the ta off and get rjet, and it doesn't use dhamma on its middle letter, so we add a kasra at the beginning. Irjet, come back, return. So again, this, this rule is pretty easy to learn as a rule. What it's a little hard to do is internalize. Um, once you've established the command form, then you can add back the female and plural endings if need be. So we have odros, study, for a boy. It becomes odrosi, study, for a girl and, or a woman. And it becomes odrosu, with a silent alif, if it's for a group of people. So we can put the translations in. So study. In English, you're just going to say study. You're just going to repeat the name of the verb. It's super easy. In Arabic, we have to go through this like two-step, three-step process, really. Conjugate it, take the ta off, add the right helping vowel. So it's hard to internalize at first. There's nothing really that complicated about it, but it's definitely not the way we work in English. So let me highlight my uh, endings here. Why is that not letting me do that? I don't know, but I'm going to cover, color that in in blue anyway. All right, so odrosu, and here we have the silent alif ending again. So I'll put that in purple to make it clear that it's silent. So odrosu, if you're study, telling a group of people to study, odrosu al al arabiya, study Arabic. Itmal is work, masculine singular. It becomes itmali if you're speaking to a woman, and itmalu with a silent alif if you're talking to a group of people. So there's a couple of things that are counterintuitive to an English speaker here. One is that we had to have to add this helping vowel in the first place. And two is like everything else in Arabic, we have to add endings for gender and number. And we just have to get used to doing this. So it's a lot less intuitive to an English speaker to make the affirmative command than it is to make the negative command or to make the affirmative command in English, which is super easy and basic. So this is just something you have to pick up. So notice that the helping vowel gets written without its hamza. And in most written texts, you won't see the vowel itself. You'll just see the alif. Um, and this is the clue that this is a command and not a first person singular verb. So edros with the hamza is I study. Udrus without the Hamza is study. Amel is I work with the Hamza. Itmel is work without the Hamza. Arje is I return or come back with the Hamza. Irje is come back, return, the command without the Hamza. So this is key when you're reading a written text that if the verb begins with just an alif, 
The alif is the chair for the helping vowel, and that tells you that this is a command. If it's first person singular, then you're going to see the alif bi hamza at the beginning of the verb. So when students of mine learn to conjugate verbs, one of the things that they'll do a lot is leave the hamza off the I do it form. And I have to go back through and be like, no, 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 this is actually important. The hamza needs to be there to distinguish it as first person singular instead of a command. So watch out for that one because it's a way to misinterpret things and you want to avoid that. So again, none of this is super difficult. But it's a little hard at first to learn to pick the right helping verb on the fly. And what I mean here is right helping vowel on the fly. Pardon me. So let me fix that for a second. Um, so what I usually tell students to do um, is to just make a neutral vowel. Udras, arje, etmal. And that will get the point across well enough that everyone will understand you. Just as you go and you learn more verbs, learn to be a little more intuitive about what helping vowel they'll take to uh, form the command form. So that's pretty much it here. I'm going to urge you, udrosu, study. Go out and study. But for now, I'm going to say, ma salema. Goodbye.